Jim. Hi, Captain. How long you been on the mainland? Too long. Honolulu's gonna look good to me. Where you been? Hollywood. I sold him my book. Oh. Did you uh, write him a movie? No, I didn't want to stay. <laughs> You're punchy. Going home to the islands when you could have stayed in Hollywood with all them actresses around? I give it some thought. Hey, some casino? I'd be a pigeon. How many passengers this trip? You know, just one besides you. Hey. Did you ever meet this Marlene Dietrich up close? Far from here to there. Sexy. Very good. <laughs> you know, I saw that picture of us three times. Well, she sang that song and had those long black stockings and that black garter belt. <laughs> that gal hasn't got a thing out of place. <laughs> Say, your other passenger isn't so bad. Oh. The company's got strict rules. Business and pleasure don't mix. Billy tense. Why'd the police bring her aboard? Think of this with the big casino. Cops just wanted to make sure she got out of town. Why? What are you gonna do? Put her in a book or something? Maybe. <laughs> Stay away from that one, son. It'll cost you. She takes guys like you to the cleaners. Might be worthwhile. Too expensive. Um, you know, when a lady's down to her last five bucks, a landlubber like you is made to order for her. And uh, this lady knows her business. Except she ain't no lady. You mind if I have some coffee? Help yourself. Miss Stover, Mr. Blair. Hello. How do you do? Captain, you ever been in Leesburg, Mississippi? No. Must have been your brother then. Well, you mean there's somebody there that looks like me? Your twin. Well, what's he do? Run the town? Nope, he stands in front of the courthouse and scratches himself and gawks at the girls. Makes dirty jokes and thinks he's quite a guy. You know, Captain, when a sailor runs off at the mouth, he ought to have a napkin handy to wipe his chin. <laughs> Drown yourself, will you? I'd like to try that apology again, Miss Stover. It's not important. I've heard Gutter talk before. Well, I'm really sorry it happened. Well, maybe you'd like to do me a favor. Drowning myself is out. No, you can go and live in. But stop pounding that typewriter all night so I can get some sleep. Chalk up one more apology. The rest of the trip home, I'll do my writing in the daytime. What kind of things do you write? Fiction. Magazines, mostly. Do you ever buy any ideas, like, say, part of somebody's life story? Yours? Maybe. Your story's been done. Who, me, Mamie Stover? Don't be silly. I've never talked to a writer in my life. Only the names and geography change that people know. Let's see, you're, uh, 26. Any family? My father still lives in Leesburg. Oh, it makes it simple. Back in 1930... In 1933, Mamie Stover was going to graduate from Leesburg High. 
the best looking girl in her class, but not the happiest. Cinderella, but no gown, no coats. She never had any pretty clothes because her father, Tom Stover, drank up the few bucks he made. Pop's name was Gus, and he didn't drink. He didn't do much of anything. But Gus Stover's daughter had one thing, her looks. The men said she was hot as a smokestack. And all this attention worried Mother Stover. Mom died a week before graduation. Who sponsored the beauty contest, Mamie? The Legion of the Elks. You make it sound like it happens every day. Well, it does. I work newspapers that sponsor beauty contests. I know all about these shapely Cinderella's and the yearning hearts and what happens to most of them. The only thing I can't understand is why they don't go home. Marry some have not like my old man. I went home once, about a year later. I'd saved up a couple hundred dollars, made a big splash. I wanted all think I was rich and had made good. I sure got a boot out of my old man. He told them all down at the courthouse that I was gonna buy him a big house and servants one of these days. And now the door is closed? I closed it. There's only two kinds of people that go home. The failures that crawl in the back way and the successful ones that ride down the main street in a big car while the band plays Welcome Home. I'll wait for that car. Against the ship's railing, she looked out toward the horizon as if to penetrate what lay beyond. I like to stand here, she told him. It does me good. Makes me realize I have to look ahead. Only ahead, never back. Thought she said my life's been written before. Basically, it has, but you make it different. You're an interesting character study, maybe. Like a fish in a bowl? Oh, of course not. Look, if you object, I'll get rid of it. Now, don't tear me up. Now, don't. Having a story written about you is almost as good as being a cover girl. You'll pardon me while I read about myself. can the last night out. Do you feel like answering 20 questions? I'll try. Okay, I'll meet you up on deck. Right. Is that your Honolulu moon? Yep. You like it? I don't trust it. I used to wait for the moon to come out when I was a kid so as I could wish. Never worked. It will. The island's a good place for wishing, for building a new life. Yeah, like how? I'll stake you to room rent and help you get a job in the sugar business or a pineapple cannery. How much would I make? Thirty dollars or so. Be another have not. No, Jimmy. I'm going to get my chance at the big money. Once for a couple of days, it was so close I could almost taste it. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I've got a job when we dock. A girlfriend of mine has it practically set. Doing what? It's a place called the Bungalow. They got 20 or 30 girls. Oh, that's great. Mamie Stover, the Anglo-Saxon bombshell among the hula hulas. 
It's okay with me as long as the money rolls in. And as long as I get to go home someday and look down on all those people that look down on my folks and me. Is that too much to ask? No. Just tough to get. Getting the honky-tonk off your back might be a big job when it comes time to go home. What am I supposed to do? I told you. I'll do whatever I can to help. Whatever you can? Jimmy, will you take me with you to your house on the hill? I can handle it honest if you just give me a little time. You could dress me up and teach me how to behave. Life's not that simple. You can't be transported to a hilltop by magic or on the back of somebody else. In other words, the answer's no. The answer is no. That's what I thought. Is that a friend of yours? Yes. She's somebody special? Annalee? Yeah, kind of special. Hilltop. Yes. All set, miss. Thank you. Look, Mammy, I know I don't know your thing, but... I'd feel better if you take this as a loan. Something for you to lean on until you get set. I shouldn't take it, Jimmy, but I will. Some people can afford to be respectable, but I can't. Well, so long. Thanks for the money and the boat ride. Thanks for everything, Perkins. Thank you, Miss. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, dear me. I almost pulled your ship in with my hands. Oh, I'm so happy you're home. Me too. Maybe I didn't realize it until now, but this is where I belong. When you come out of the ether, Mr. Jim, please say hello to me. Hello, Aki. Thank you. I will mend your rifle, soldier. Is Miss Davis here? Miss who? Davis. Jackie Davis. Jackie. Oh, yeah. Be right down. Where you from, Seattle? No, why? Well, they all come from there. Best answers. Me! Jack! <laughs> oh, what a relief to find you. How are you, honey? How are you, Mabe? Nothing wrong, 
that a healthy job won't cure. Good. Well, the face and figure is still the same. You ought to be a saint. Come on in, let the boss just look you over. Well, don't you think I ought to freshen up a bit? Uh-uh. Let's get to it before we open for business. No sense in you losing tonight. Well, is there any kind of special story I give her? Act like you're back in grammar school. And she's the teacher. Come in. Mrs. Parchman, this is the friend I told you about. Mamie Stover. Where are your manners, Jackie? Sorry. Miss Stover, this is our manager, Mr. Adkins. How do you do, Miss Stover? Put your suitcase down. Hold still, please. Get used to being inspected. If you work for me, people will be paying good hard cash to look you over. Harry? I believe so. Turn around. Hmm. That'll do. Physically, you appear satisfactory. You'll have to dress a little more... Uh... Flamboyantly. Yes, flamboyantly. Have to to attract attention. Sell more dances, more whiskey and champagne. Ever been in trouble with the police? No. Harry? I don't believe it. Well? I mean, no convictions. One more thing. The bungalow is a respectable place. We sell drinks and dances and social entertainment. Is that understood? Well, Jackie, I guess your friend's hired. Dress her up properly and have her in the chicken patch 15 minutes before we open. Yes, Miss Barton. There'll be two more new hostesses. I want them to hear our rules at the same time. Come on, honey. Close the door. Your attention, ladies. If you please, Harry. There are four don'ts. Break any one of them and you'll be running into me. Shiver, shiver, shiver. If any of you objects to obeying Mrs. Parchment's rules, we want to know it now. You're going to do slap my wrist or something? Did you say something? You, Miss Stover. Who, me? No, no, sir. If any of you are the kind that has to have a boyfriend on the outside, or if you're the kind that wants to chisel with some two-bit taxi driver, or you think that you're good enough to mix with the island's blue bloods, then the sooner you get out of here, the better. My rules are not unfair, just good business. I can't operate profitably unless I get strict obedience. Rule number one, you will live here on these premises. It's the only way I can be certain you're staying out of trouble, not giving my place a bad name. No outside boyfriends. Those kind of tie-ups bring nothing but trouble. They take your mind away from your job. Three, no swimming at the beach at Waikiki or going into any of the hotels. Once you begin hobnobbing with those across the tracks people, the complaints will start. This is a legal business, but I can't afford complaints. Four, no bank accounts. Bank accounts attract attention. The attention of the income tax people. Now, these are my rules. Live up to them, work hard at your jobs, and you can earn big money. 30% on everything you sell. Break any of these rules, and you can expect to explain to Mr. Adkins. All right, Charlie, Henry, open up. I'll get set, honey. I can swarm in here like the locusts. Remember, sell, sell, sell. Whiskey and champagne. Smile it up, you new lady. Smile it up. Remember, smiles means money. Smiles means money.
Good morning, Miss Anna Lee. Aki? Hi. I met the mailman. Oh, thanks. Coffee, eggs, bacon? Well, just coffee. My bulges won't allow two breakfasts. That's the wrong point of view. You bulge nice. Thank you. Open your mail. I'm not company. Oh, just a bunch of bills. No, I peeked. The second one feels crinkly inside. It's from Mamie Stover, the girl in the boat. Well, there's a hundred dollars I never expected to get back. Attractive way to send an invitation. You going? Of course not. Why not? Now stop trying to unload me. <laughs> That'll be the day. Remember the watch you told, don't let them clip you. Quit it, I've been around. When they start pressing for champagne, tell them it makes you belch, then order beer. Excuse me, buddy. More tickets, Gladys, give me a whole strip. Come on, come on, hurry it up. I'll take it easy, Tarzan. Mm. You mean to say you used up all those tickets already? Sure, sure, cover it off to me, now. Betty ain't a hundred pounds, so come with. Those little guys make the best dances. Oh, uh, yeah. How many? Three dollars worth. Well, that won't last you long. Long enough. Where will I find Mamie Silver? You won't. Not with three bucks worth of tickets. Would 10 be an improvement? 20 would be insurance. So? Ask the boss for Mamie. Mrs. Parchment, the one on the stool. She keeps track of the girls. I, uh, I beg your pardon. What can we do for you? Well, I'd like to see Mamie Stover. We don't permit social calls. Well, this isn't social. My mistake. Mamie's tied up at present. A private party in one of the champagne rooms. All right, if I wait? We have many other hostesses, you know. I'd rather wait. Mamie isn't beer or whiskey. Champagne only. I like champagne. All right. Take a seat in the cocktail lounge. Take your tickets, partner. They steal you blind in these joints. Mister, you gonna quit making with the hands? Oh, stop beaving. You got six bucks worth of my tickets, haven't you? Quit it, jerk. You'll have to behave, mister. Oh, are you gonna make me four eyes? If I have to. Stand back, honey, while I eat him alive. <laughs> Time for you. 
can take it soon. Jimmy. Yep. You sure surprised me. When did you turn Brit town? A couple months ago. Sold lots more tickets. They've been calling me Flaming Mamie. You don't like it, do you? Sure. It's one of my favorite colors. Hey, what about this hundred? Why did you return it? Some guys you just don't clip, that's all. Thanks. I like that. I hear this Lonely Hearts music a dozen times a night. We can do without that. Sit down. How have you been? Fine. You? I'm doing pretty good. Your time's up, mister. And so is my money. Look, Mamie. Suppose I had to take it back to the mainland of this hundred. No, thanks, Jim. No, no. You don't like working here, do you? Liking your job isn't what counts. Not with me. You know that. You say so. Drink? Well, that's just wadded stuff. They cut one bottle in half, send up both, and charge you double. Well, at least they keep the label. Look, Jimmy, I, uh, I get 30% back in commission, so I'd like to pick up this tab. Well, nothing doing. I'm here because I want to see you. Why? Because you need more material for your story, or you feel sorry for me? Either one, Cinderella. The story didn't tell, so I called it off. How about feeling sorry for you? Why? Anyone as sure of herself as you are, as sure of what she wants and how to get it, doesn't need sympathy. Well, that doesn't mean you'd be... Willing to see me once in a while. You know, outside this place. Why not? Oh, that's wonderful, Jimmy. Wonderful. I haven't had anybody I could talk to or ask for advice or anything. I'm a good listener, but a lousy advisor. Not in my book. We're not supposed to have outside dates, but I think I've got a way to work it out. I'll bet on it. No bet you'd win. How about tomorrow? Fine. Well, I pick you up. <laughs> Honey, no hunk of man is worth the risk. This isn't a risk, it's an investment. I need somebody on the outside to help handle things for me. Always an angle. Oh, well, why not? They pay off. If Adkins gets wise, he'll beat those angles black and blue. The way I feel these days, I could take Atkins and his goon squad in the same ring. Your date can't be that expensive. Comic. Now, don't forget to alibi for me if anything comes up. I can't talk you out of going. Nope. Okay. Anybody ask, I say you went to the dentist. Bertha goes for things hygienic. Okay. Rise and shine, lady. Not a stool pigeon in sight. This is a rough way to keep a date. I'm over and keep me company. Uh, uh I need the elbow room. Got something I want to show you. Twenty-two hundred dollars. That's more money than my old man made in several years. More than I've ever seen in one bundle. You mean to tell me you made all that sunny phony champagne? Mm-hmm. That, plus the dances and the sitting out time. Leesburg, get out your loudest band. Here comes Mamie Stover. Yes, ma'am, the cotton queen comes home in style. Beat those drums for your Mississippi Cinderella. I'm glad you're going home. Oh, no, not yet, Jimmy. This is only the beginning. I'm averaging $40 and $50 a night for my cut. 
That kind of arithmetic may never get you home. Oh, sure it will, but there's no rush. Besides, you stop trying to chase me out of town. Remember, you're talking to Bertha Parchman's number one girl. Rich, too. Bertha's even having a song written about me. What, an up-to-date version of Ten Cents a Dance? No, I'm gonna be famous. Well, if I'm coaxed, I might buy a copy. If I'm coaxed, I might autograph it. Here we are. Here's one of the reasons why Ellen's different, Mamie. Just you and me in the ocean, huh? And a picnic lunch. I didn't know you played golf. Oh, not too often. Just mornings and afternoons. What are you playing? Country club. She play too? Who? The girl on the dock. Oh, Anna Lee. Sure, she plays a good game. Very hard to play? Just aggravating. Here, you unroll these mats while I lock up. Jimmy, will you do me a favor? I don't know. I need a check for $200 made out to my father, Gus Stover. Well, that's pretty thoughtful. Mm -mm. Strictly selfish. Pop will show that money down at the courthouse and the barbershop and all over town. Brag me up as the biggest success story of the year. It's worth a lot more than $200 to me. Okay, Cinderella sold. One check to Gus Stover for $200. Thank you, Jimmy. Gee, that'll leave me with $2,000 even, won't it? On the nose. Trouble is, I hate to keep that much money around. Bank it. Mm -mm. It's against the house rules. Bertha says the income tax people watch us pretty close. She should know. Jimmy, why don't you keep my money in your bank account? No, ma'am, nothing doing. You know, you're a pretty strange guy. You said you thought you understood me, but you don't. I'm only trying to make you my friend. I want to trust you with my money. There isn't anything closer between friends than that, is there? Is there? You could rent a safety deposit box and keep it there for me, couldn't you? Am I holding up progress on the year's bestseller? I haven't written anything decent in a week. Then let's chase the cobwebs and shoot some golf. Oh, well, I... I can't right now. What's wrong, Jimmy? Not a thing. My being here embarrasses you. Where'd you get that idea? Knowing you. Are you expecting somebody? Why would that embarrass me? Is it Mamie Stover? Yes, I uh, sent Aki to pick her up. She phoned that she had to see me. Business or pleasure? That's not funny. No, no, it isn't. We haven't had a real laugh in a long time, have we? Oh, Anna Lee, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to snap. Lately, I've been putting all the wrong words down on the paper and saying the wrong ones, too. It'll all come out all right, I guess. 
When you wind up your meeting, I'll be at the club. Well, you don't have to leave. I can't risk having you hate me for staying. Mr. Blair is waiting. I'm back, Mr. Jim. Yeah, and the door's still open. Hi. Whew, what a welcome. Your servant treats me like I'm his servant, and you light up like a burned-out bulb. What does this mean? From Leesburg, Mississippi, to Mrs. James Blair. I didn't think he'd mind. My dear daughter. Tell your husband how much I appreciated his check for $200. Please, Jimmy, let me explain. That's what I'm waiting for, and it better be good. When I sent the check, I had to write something. I had to give my old man some explanation about why I left San Francisco. I, well, I've been leaving too many cities lately. I wanted to keep him hoping, Jimmy. So I told him that I was married to some guy with a lot of money and that, and that he could keep bragging me up downtown about how I was going to buy him a house and, you know, servants and mint juleps. You had no right to do it. I know. At least you could have mentioned it first. Well, I was afraid you'd say no. Ah, uh, Jimmy, he, he doesn't write very often, maybe four or five times a year. Only when I send the money, you know. Wouldn't it be all right? Here's your letter. Maybe I could keep the writing down to two or three times. Okay? Okay. Gee, this is sure a nice house you got here. You know, it's the first home I've been in in several years. Boy, this is the way to live. High up looking down. What do you want to see me about? I am due at the country club. Miss Hilltop? I don't like that name. I didn't mean it that way. I wish I could trade places with her. You know, there's different rights for different people. There's all kinds of don'ts for me. And not a single don't up here on the hilltop. Oh, there's lots of them. On every hilltop in the world. Not the kind to keep you from breathing. You could breathe back in Leesburg. I'm holding a lot of money for you, Mamie. Take it and go home in style. Make the biggest splash in the town's history. Settle down there. With the same rights as everyone else. If you stay here, even if you make a million dollars, you still have to live with those don'ts. Not me. I'm going to break every single one of them wide open. I'm going to live in a house just like this. Maybe even bigger. You just wait and see. Jimmy, with enough money, you can buy anything. With a million dollars, you can build a hilltop higher than anybody else's. OK. It's your own million in your life. What is it you wanted? I think I know how to make that million. Did you ever stop and think what's going to happen when the war comes? Yes. People will die. Thousands and thousands of them. Yeah, but some will get rich. Look, there are dirty names for people like that. I'm used to dirty names. Let me tell you my idea. Oh, quit it. I'm sick of listening to your ideas. And I'm fed up with playing caretaker to your bank account. Every time you open your mouth, you talk about money. Big money, small money, money, money. I'm averaging 40 and $50 a night for my cut. There isn't anything closer between friends than money. What kind of a yardstick is that? Don't you ever get sick of measuring everything, every human emotion in terms of money? No, Jimmy, I don't get sick of it. But that's something only another have not would understand. The difference is I was born with nothing and raised on lots more of the same. When you talk about money, you're slumming. When I talk about it, it's because I'm just plain scared. Mamie. Hmm. 
turn me away. Don't go. I'm sorry. I'm a stupid, bigoted, opinionated jackass. Oh, no, Jimmy. No, you're nice. Always nice. It's me who isn't the girl with the angles. I'd like him. I'd like him. Your date. If you gotta go, you're gonna be late. Downstairs. Don't, honey, don't! Nothing like very much. Work it over, too. Let you go on me. Kill her. I'm better than a kill you, too. B-47. Give me a hot one, Lou. You're off pretty soon, ain't you? A few more minutes. Fine time for target practice. We interrupt to bring you an emergency warning. Listen carefully. The island of Oahu is being attacked by enemy planes. The center of the attack is Pearl Harbor.
Come on, screwball. No way, Jackie, wait. Come here, look down. See? You're all running, scared, getting out. But not me. I'm gonna buy real estate with every dollar I can raise. I'll get it for 10 cents on the dollar. Keep stalling, you'll wind up buying real estate in the cemetery. Oh, come on, kid. Bertha starts asking for us. You're coming with me. The hilltop is safer. No, the storeroom's a safe space. It's bombproof. Then get going. Amen to that. Come on. When the all clear sounds, I'll try and phone you. I won't be home. I'll be in the army. Why? Can't you wait till they call your number? They've been calling it all morning. Now go on. Get down to the basement. and this is stealing. That's what I mean. to do is wait a couple of months and I get 10,000 for the place. Will you do that, mister? Goodbye. I'll tell you what, make it 4,500 and it's a deal. Quit it, I'll laugh myself to death. 2,800 cash, now take it or leave it, I haven't got time to haggle. 4,000. Say, wait a minute. It's cash. Strictly. Okay, I wanna get over to the mainland, I don't want any part of this war. You know, I was intending to put another building up here someday. Well, don't worry about it, mister, I'll do it for you. You sleep good nights? Like a baby. Come on, let's sign those papers. Sorry I'm late, Augie. I was afraid no pass for you, Mr. Jim. My last one. Scuttlebutt says we ship out tomorrow. Did you bring Miss Dover to the house? Yes. Why don't you like her? You don't, do you? It is rude for a servant to discuss the acquaintances of his employer. We've been together too many years for you to suddenly start spouting etiquette. Or call yourself a servant. I thought we usually liked the same people. Yes, sir. Usually. You're a snob. Yes, sir. Guess what? No hints? OK. 
Stone Mame Company Incorporated. What's that? That's me. Me, Jimmy. STO for Stover and MAM for Mamie. Stone Mame Company Incorporated. I'm a corporation since yesterday. Now you can buy and sell all the real estate in Honolulu. Yeah. Buying and renting. And guess who my biggest tenant is? Who? Uncle Sam. Come here, landlord. They're renting everything in sight. Including me. Oh, I'm gonna miss you a lot when you're gone, Jimmy. <laughs> I think I'm gonna miss you more than that, Cinderella. It'll make coming home that much nicer. You know, all morning when I was waiting for my CO to okay my pass, I kept wondering and worrying with Oculus. Able to reach it. I guess I like being with you. Mm -hmm. In private places. Just you and me in the scenery. No people. Hey, the private places was your idea. Your bungalow rules and regulations. Yeah, I know. It seems like today ought to be different. Wanna go somewhere and dance? You mean someplace they don't sell tickets? Yeah. Okay. Aki. Aki. Call the Holly Kalani Hotel. The table for two on Diamond Head Terrace. Yes, sir. should have come here, Jimmy. I don't think your friends approve of me. You mean my ex-friends? Wouldn't it be better if we left? You stay right where you are. I just don't like them staring at you. Well, if they do, I'll dump the table in their laps. Oh, no, Jimmy, please. Let them stare if they want to, but don't do anything embarrassing. Not in a place like this. You're the lady in this crowd, Cinderella. You just give me time and I will be. You'll be so darn proud of me, you'll bust. I'm busting already. How about a dance? Okay. <sighs> sure feels good not to have to collect tickets. <sighs> He's a good man as to kiss. Best. That someone you know? Jimmy, I've got to go. What for? I've got two more hours. I'm not supposed to be on this side of town. It's against the rules. Hey, relax. There are no rules tonight, remember? Harry Atkins doesn't take any excuses. His birth was muscle man. Muscle man? You mean he'd hurt you? Jimmy, please, let's go. Sit down. I want to know. He ever hit you? Please don't argue with him. Barroom fighting's his business. I beg your pardon, soldier. Miss Stover and I have some business to discuss. Sit down with us first, Mr. Atkins. I have something funny to tell you. Thank you. Some other time, maybe. Our business can't wait. Now, don't be rude. This won't take long. You know, when I saw you coming in, I said to Miss Stover, look who's here. Harry Atkins. Who will they let in next? A cockroach like Atkins shouldn't be allowed in the same room with human beings. I'm not looking for trouble with you, soldier. 
I know, I know, only with women. You're a tough guy who can lick any girl at weight. Sometime when you're out of uniform, look me up and I'll tell you about it. You just take off the glasses and I'll take care of the uniform. Please, Jimmy. <laughs> Him up. Wait a minute. What for? What for? Take your hands off him. Take it easy, miss. Don't tell me what Stay to do. Stay out of this, Mamie. Why don't you arrest the right guy? He came barging in here and threatened to beat me up. Beat you up? Yes, me. That's his specialty. Beating up girls. He works at the bungalow. Take your hands off him. Okay, Sergeant. Release him. What about this, mister? She's a liar. Mister, where I come from, we don't call ladies' names. She's no lady. She's a tramp, and she's on the wrong side of town. At ease, soldier. At ease. I'll take over. Sergeant. Yes, sir. I think he beats up women. What do you think? Yes, sir. I think he does, too. What kind of a gag is this? Shut up, mister. Sergeant, I'm going to take another look around at things. Meanwhile, why don't you and your partner take this gentleman outside and discuss things? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's go talk, mister. Well, good night, soldier. Have a pleasant evening. Good night, miss. Thanks, Captain. My apologies, Mr. Blair. I, I must ask that you and this lady leave. Well, you can take your apology. Don't, Jimmy. We don't like it here anyway. Go on, soldier. One fight a night is all I can allow you. There's not going to be any fight, Captain. We're leaving. Thank you, sir. You run a real sloppy joint here, don't you, boy? You can't lick the whole island, Jimmy. I got a number on my back, and they all know it. There aren't going to be any more numbers on your back. You're quitting Bertha's tonight. I love you, Mamie. Not just in private, but anywhere and everywhere. No, Jimmy. Not me. I can't let you do that. You mustn't ruin your life for me. Now, don't argue. After the war's over, we can get married. The world's a big place with lots of room for us. But no more Berthas. Wherever I'm being sent, I want to know that you're mine. Exclusively mine. Oh, Jimmy, I am. I am. And goodbye, bungalow. Oh, yes. Tonight. Right now. I'm so crazy, don't be happy. This just can't be happening to me. Not to me. I love you, Cinderella. Let's have a letter from you once in a while, Aki. Yes, sir. Keep safe, Mr. Jim. I will. Maybe. I can arrange to have money sent to you. I won't need him, Jimmy. I'll be fine. I just want you to be all right. I will. I'll write as often as I can. I will, too. Every day, every single day. Would you rather leave Honolulu and wait somewhere else? Right here. As long as it takes. That's a contract, Cinderella. This makes it legal. Around this way, it almost looks like the real thing. It's always been with me, Harry. The business comes first. Mm -hmm.
Mamie meets Dover is business. Especially Mamie. She brings him in. You know that. She's that special that she can break the rules and get me beaten up? I can't afford to have trouble with the military police. Once I'm placed off limits, it's goodbye bungalow. Suppose I take a trip to one of the other islands for a few days, maybe a week until it's forgotten. That won't help. I'm sorry, Harry, but we have to part company. Here's two months' pay. After five years, it's here's your severance pay and goodbye, just like that. I've had your things packed. Okay with me, brother. I've been fed up anyway. Gets monotonous spending all your time with an ugly woman. Don't wife. you say it, Harry. Don't say it. Dressing, lady. Never mind the lecture, Bertha. You can't fire me. I quit. Fire you? What for? Have a snort. Help yourself. No, thanks. This isn't the watered stuff. No, I'm not drinking. <laughs> well, I am. With Harry gone, I don't have to mind my P's and Q's anymore. We're always trying to be something we're not. It's a matter with trying. If you pitch hard enough, you can make it. That's what I used to think. Harry told me I was different so many times I began to believe a liar. Well, well, let's pass now. I'm going to show Mr. Atkins I needed him around here like a hangover. Mamie, I'm going to build you into the biggest thing this business ever saw. And I'm boosting your cut to 35%. Well, the pardon came too late, Bertha, because I'm leaving. I only came in tonight to pack my things. Seriously? Absolutely. I'm going to prove you can be something you're not supposed to be. Who's the salesman? What do you mean? I mean, who is the guy who talked to you into walking out on a gold mine? His name doesn't matter. No, I guess it doesn't. They all give you the same pitch. I love you. Ugh. <laughs> Be mine, exclusively mine. I can't stand sharing you with anyone else. <sighs> What's wrong with that? Nothing. Not a thing. How many guys who prance in here every night have some broad sitting around back home hanging on a promise that'll never be kept. Well, this one will, because we're getting married right after the war. Maybe even sooner. Or maybe never. Oh, tie it off, Bertha. What do you know about anything like this? You never met anybody like Jimmy. Jimmy? My salesman's name was Philip. Philly boy, 1918, the last war. <laughs> Good old Philly boy. He could promise you the whole world in six syllable words. What would I know about anything like this? You're looking at a broad who waited all through a war. A 
and then got brushed off. Jimmy's not like that. Neither was good old Philly boy. <laughs> what am I complaining about? The girl he married has got old Philly boy and a one-way ticket to a crummy four-room apartment. But I've got a half a dozen annuities and another fortune coming up. The boom started, Mamie, and it'll grow all through this war. A million spenders coming through the island every few months. Well, I better get packed. I tell you what. I'll, uh, I'll make it 40%. I can't figure anyone walking away from money like this. I wish I didn't have to, Bert. But it was Jimmy's last leave, and he wanted me to promise. And I promised. Naturally. Look, I'll get your mailing address in a good part of town, in case he writes to you. Well, what he doesn't know won't hurt him, will it? No, I guess not. Look at it this way, Mamie. Suppose your Jimmy's on the level, like you say he is. Suppose when he gets back home, you can show him a bank book with another 50 or 100,000 in it. You think he'll object? <laughs> Show me a guy who ever objected to a dowry. 40%, maybe. The biggest cut in the place. Make it 50. <laughs> okay, 50. But that's confidential, just between us. Yes. Want a drink? Jewelry on him, Peachy. Take some of it off. Nina, Are you the proprietor, down. madam? I have that privilege. I'm Captain Sumac, in command of the military police detail for this area. Oh, it's a great pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. What can I do for you? We've received complaints from servicemen about overcharging. The bungalow? That's preposterous. I'm not here to debate it, madam. I'm here to tell you that if these complaints continue, your establishment will be placed off limits. Well, you have my word, my most solemn word. There'll be no further complaints. Ladies, I want you to hear Colonel, uh, uh, what was the name, Summer? Sumac. Sumac. Eldon Sumac. And it's Captain. Thank you very much, sir. I'm delighted that Captain Sumac is here to see the high type of our personnel. Would you like to stay with us and judge for yourself? Yes. Yes, I think I will. Wonderful. Miss Dover, show Captain Sumac into the cocktail lounge. Glad I'm getting a chance to thank you for the other day. Oh, I just did that to make my sergeant happy. He enjoyed talking things over with Mr. Adkins. You tell your sergeant that he talks good. Oh, can I buy you a drink? Oh, thanks. Uh, well, soda pop only. I'm on duty. Two soda pops. Soda pop? Mm-hmm. You don't have to go the soda pop way. Oh, I can take it if you can. Charlie, Henry, open up the door. Smile, ladies. Smile. Make our heroes welcome. Smile.
Atlantic Ocean. Don't your ship ever sail, Tars? I got no ship. I'm on special duty. Where? Here? Come on, quit making me nervous. Give me some tickets. I'll tell you what, Tars. I'll throw in some extras if you tell me what you do with all these tickets. Come on, come on. You're not old enough. in Honolulu? Quite a while, I hope. Well, if you mean me, I don't think it'll do you much good. You know, we don't do business with officers. So what do you do with yourself in the daytime? Rest up for the nighttime. Four tickets, mister. Pay now. Oh, honey, this is on the house. All right. Well, Okoli Maluna. Thanks again for the other day. To you. Captain, do you play golf? Middle 80s. What's that? My average score. I shoot 84, 85, thereabouts. They let you play at the country club? Congress says I'm an officer and a general. Would they let you uh, bring a friend? You know, somebody that wanted to learn the game? When and what time? Pupil? Tomorrow morning it'll be just swell, teacher. Watching the hula girl dance You gotta be careful you tempting romance Don't keep your eyes on her hips Her naughty hula hips Just keep your eyes on the hands Remember she's telling a story to you Her opu is swaying but don't watch the view Don't concentrate on the swing It doesn't mean a thing Keep your eyes on the hands And when she goes around the island Swinging hips so tantalizing Just keep your eyes where they belong Because the hula has a feeling That'll send your senses reeling It makes a weak man strong Your eyes are revealing I'm fooling no one No use in concealing We're having some fun but if you're too young to date or over 98, keep your eyes on the hands, they tell the story. Keep your eyes on the hands. Now, lesson number one is the grip. With the left hand, Shake hands with it like that. Overlap the little finger of the right hand like that. Try it. No, 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 that's not it. What do you say we try it the way they do it in the movies? Like this. Just relax and get comfortable, pupil. Not too comfortable, huh? You won't learn anything that way. Neither will you. Don't know any other way to teach. Oh, sure you do. Just pretend I'm one of the fellas. <laughs> sound. Very sound advice. Now, sir, pay very close attention to lesson number one. Darling, first of all, you've got to stop sending me money and worrying about how I'm making out. All those buildings I bought and rented are paying off like slot machines. You were right, I should have quit the bungalow long ago. And now for the big, big news. Your Mississippi Cinderella knows how to play golf. I've already had two lessons. And where do you think I play, Mr. Corporal Blair? Why, naturally, the country club. Do your reading in the library, Corporal. We're moving on. Hi, Effie! Get going. More of a lonely 
Lonely Hearts expression, Mamie. Madam, if you please. Now, Miss Dover, not Lonely Hearts. Uh, give me that come hither look. That's it. Yes, yes. Provocative. Definitely provocative. Steady. Steady. Excellent. Excellent. You finished? Yes. I'm going to have this photograph blown up so it'll be six or seven feet high. You know, I wonder how I'd do if I opened a place of my own. Oh, don't bluff me, Mamie. You don't have the kind of money a place like this takes. That plus, my rentals are bringing in 4000 a month. As it happens, I was going to raise you to 60%. You did say 70, didn't you? Yes, 70. Ah, Bertha, you a doll. See you in the chicken patch. Might as well get my own pinups. Can't tell the girls without a photograph, man. Wow, is that Mamie flaming or is she flaming? Say, where's this line going, right? What difference does it make, dog face? Just fall in. Any line this long has to be for whiskey, watermelon, or women. Hey! 99! Come on, champ. It's drinking time. I judged the rule better on the seventh, I'd have had another par. How do you like that? She finally breaks a hundred and belly aches. <laughs> That's me. Wait till I write Jimmy. Let's skip the corporal today. He's a sergeant now. Quiet, lady. I still outrank him. Not with me. Hello, George. Do the usual, please. You know, Mamie, trouble with you is you're, you're passing up a real good thing. Me, for a very small maybe. How are your wife and children, Eldon? Why remind me that way back east, 6,000 miles away. So's your sergeant, only he's west of here. The poet who said absence makes the heart grow fonder, he was running off at the mouth. That's like asking a hungry man to just look at a sirloin steak, but keep thinking about the one he's got home in the icebox. I'm against starvation, Mamie. Yeah, my instincts told me that the first golf lesson. Sure, I'm run of the mill. Common clay. But so are you. We can both spot a penny rolling the wrong way. It'll be a lot easier doing the spotting together. Let's talk about something else, shall we? Don't let this blue blood atmosphere go to your head, Mamie. I'm just doing some simple arithmetic. Listen, this war might last another few years, you know. We're both here for the duration. A long, long way from my family and your Jimmy. Quit it, Eldon. You're way off base. That's kind of sudden and unbecoming, isn't it? I mean, this injured innocence routine. You're not the type to have stars in your eyes. Or kid yourself into believing that some guy is coming back here to marry you? It just doesn't go with selling tickets. your own. Flaming Mamie belongs to me. Just let me look, boy. Looking ain't touching. That ain't for real. It can't be. Well, that's the realest real you've ever seen. Where'd you get it, Mike? Well, it's a Honolulu broad. A C Company replacement had a lot of prints made when he was in Honolulu last month. He's selling them for two bucks a copy. Mm, boy, must be making a million. Oh, I gotta buy me one of those for my lonesome nights. How you like it, Sarge? Boy, if I ever get to Honolulu, I'm heading straight for Flamin' Mamie's and see if she is real. But, Pam, 
No, sir. Here? No, sir. Fine. Yeah, we can check you out today. Any chance of a furlough, Major? Of course. For a shoulder wound, I always recommend a week. Sergeants, 10 days. Full of cards. Jim. If you can't with Mamie, take a chance with Mamie. The chances are you'll find romance with Mamie. There are no stars in the sky. All the stars are all in Mamie's eyes. Any land for Mamie would go mad for Mamie And give up all he ever had for Mamie Fellas who try to resist Are the higher a psychiatrist I'm not your darling. I'm just another GI off that line outside. Oh, no, Jim. Come in. Oh, please. Listen, please listen. Here, collect your tickets. Jimmy, I know I'm wrong. I, I didn't realize how wrong. I'll spend the rest of my life making it up to not you. Not with me, you won't. Jim, don't say that. I didn't mean to hurt you. I, I thought you'd understand. I, I just wanted to make all the money I could. Anything so we... for a dollar, Mamie. The flaming Cinderella. No more. Never again. I swear, never again. We'll go away. Any place you say. We'll start all over again. Make the kind of a life you said we could build. That's long past for us. You don't need me. Oh, I do, Jimmy. I do. Please, Jimmy, please. Maybe. Maybe, please. Please sit down. I know when I came here, I was filled with bitterness and hate. But now that's all gone. Suddenly, I realize you don't understand. All your life, you dreamed and prayed for money, and now you've got it. And you'll always want more and more. I don't rate sitting in judgment on you. 
or the privilege of being bitter and hating. Anyway, I couldn't hate you. Not you. Or love me either. We're different men. We don't think the same about how life should be lived. But she does. Anna Lee thinks the same. It is Anna Lee, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know if Anna Lee would even see me. Is that why you came by here first? To brush me off and tell me that once a tramp, always a tramp? Oh, no, ma'am. That was the idea, but no more. One of these days, if we ever run into each other, the words will be different, easier, and friendlier. Your time's up, mister. Yeah, I guess it is. I don't need to get to the hilltop on anybody else's back. I'm there now, on the highest hill in the island, and the biggest house. Go mad for oh, maybe and give up all he ever had for oh, maybe. Fellas who try to resist are the higher a psychiatrist. Oh, the glow that lights the sky, the, the lines of traffic that she ties up when she rolls those big brown eyes up. Oh, happy, happy, happy day With a week from maybe lover's leap From maybe Van Winkle woke up from his sleep From maybe Life starts to form on the right If you want to see maybe tonight If you want to see maybe tonight If you Mamie? Nothing's changed, Mamie. You're still not welcome in San Francisco. I'm just passing through. I'm on my way home. Mississippi? Leesburg. Looks like you didn't do too good in Honolulu. If I'd told you I made a fortune and given it all away, would you believe me? No. I didn't think you would. Is it all right if I head out for the airport? Hop in. I'll give you a lift. Thank you. <laughs> 